Hey everyone, it is Stephen Wagner. You can visit my tech blog at www.stephenwagner.com. Today, I want to do some benchmarking and testing comparing the performance of a Synology Disk Station DS1621 Plus with a four drive RAID 5 array composing of uh, Seagate 2 terabyte Ironwolf disks, uh, comparing the performance with and without NVMe cache. Now, quickly, what is cache? Cache allows you to temporarily store input and output, reads and writes, in high speed storage so that it can be committed to lower speed storage, being traditional hard disk drives, at a later time. Now, this can really increase performance for certain types of workloads. If you have workloads that are rereading the same file multiple times, uh, you can benefit from this because that will essentially read caching will cache those files inside of high speed storage so that it's readily available to the clients or the guests that are trying to access that data. Now, when it comes to writes, one thing that's really cool is that if you're doing a lot of random I.O. or doing a lot of random writes to a file system, whether it's iSCSI, NFS, um, using write cache, you can have those writes being reported as committed a lot sooner than they're actually committed to physical storage. Um, so now this is super cool because, for example, virtualized environments will benefit huge from putting high speed cache in front of traditional hard disk drives. Now, last year, Synology was nice enough to ship me out a disk station DS1621 Plus NAS unit. Uh, it's a nice six bay unit and it has, I believe, two NVMe slots inside of it. Now, for SSD cache, you don't necessarily need to use M.2. You can actually use 2.5 inch SATA SSDs. However, NVMe is going to give you substantial performance increases versus uh, the SATA SSDs, which use a slower SATA. Uh, connection bus. Uh, also, please note that not all units support cache. So check the compatibility table to find out if your NAS actually supports it. Additionally, going back to the workload types, there are considerations to make when thinking about implementing SSD cache on your Synology NAS units. Uh, for example, some types of file servers will see performance increases. iSCSI and Fiber Channel definitely will. Uh, same thing with virtual machines, VMs, uh, databases, snapshots, web servers, backup tasks, and mail services. Now, unsuitable applications include uh, file servers that use long, continuous files. Uh, same thing with video streaming and playback. So, for example, if you're using this as a Plex server, it's, it's almost absolutely freaking pointless. So don't even think about it. Now, there's two different types of cache that you can implement on a Synology NAS. The first being read-only. Uh, you only have a requirement of putting in one SSD or NVMe solid state disk into the unit. Uh, with read cache, you will only get a performance increase on reads. There's a number, uh, maximum of 12 disks and you can use RAID 0, 1, and 10 on your cache array, depending on how you want to have it set up. Now keep in mind that if you have a NVMe or an SSD fail in cache with read only, it's not a big problem because all it's doing is providing read cache. So if it were to disappear or go offline, uh, the guests or clients will still be able to connect to the traditional storage to read the files. Now that's a little bit different for read and write cache. So it gets a little bit more risky because when you're performing write cache, let's say that you're doing a whole bunch of write operations, it's stored in cache. Now let's say that that cache were to go offline, there would be data loss if it was not committed to the actual volume that it's caching. And this is one of the reasons why the RAID requirements and the number of disks on the cache layer is different than read-only cache. So for example, to implement read and write cache, you need a minimum of two SSDs, maximum of 12, and they need to be configured in a RAID 1, 5, or 6 type configuration. Now, so for example, with RAID 1, this is required because if you have two disks, and let's say that one were to fail, you would still have a single disk left so that any pending write operations would be able to be committed to the underlying volume. And on top of that, from what I understand, is that if the Synology NAS determines that one of the uh, SSDs in the cache layer have failed, it will go into a protection mode and flush the cache. Uh, just to remove any potential future issues if any remaining of the SSD cache drives were to fail. So, with that being said, uh, just to get into a little bit into my environment, I have a VMware vSphere cluster, uh, numerous hosts, 
uh, 10 gig networking, multiple 10 gig links. Inside of the DS1621 Plus, I have a dual port 10 gig NIC. I'm going to be connecting to the NAS using iSCSI MPIO, MPIO standing for multipath input output. Uh, so I will get a full combined speed of 20 gigabits per second. Uh, some of you might be familiar with lag. Lag is kind of similar in the sense that it provides redundant connections and you can combine the throughput of multiple connections into um, one connection. However, keep in mind that lag only works if you have multiple connections going across the lag. Whereas, so for example, if you had one host doing one transfer over a lag, you'd get a maximum of, in my scenario, a maximum of 10 gigabits per second because um, it can't actually intelligently put it over the different connections. Now, iSCSI MPIO is a little bit different um, because it doesn't use lag. Each interface has its own IP address, but the actual iSCSI technology, it'll send either packets or data chunks, depending on how you have it configured, um, through each indiv individual layer. So for example, in a dual NIC configuration, it'll go over both paths. Um, so you'll actually be able to get full throughput on the links that you have available. Now, essentially, uh, inside of the NAS, just before we get started here, um, I also have four Seagate Ironwolf two terabyte disks. Um, they're actually 5,900 RPM, which I thought was gonna perform pretty poorly. However, when I first got this unit set up, I was very impressed with the performance of four of these two terabyte disks in a RAID 5 configuration. So with how well that's running, um, I can only imagine that the NVMe cached environment is going to run significantly better. So I'm pretty excited with that. So with all that being said, let's get to it and uh, start doing some benchmarking. So as you can see here, I've got a storage pool and a volume configured. Uh, I've got the four disks configured in a RAID 5. Everything's healthy, everything's good. Uh, there is currently no SSD cache installed. I ran the SSD cache advisor a little while back. It was telling me that I could benefit from 100. Um, now, one thing I want to show you is that Synology was nice enough to send out these SNV 3400-800G NVMe modules, which we're actually going to use, which is a little bit higher than the 100 gigs that the uh, SSD cache advisor is recommending. Um, after configuring this volume, we went ahead and created an iSCSI target and LUN. You can see it's all configured here. We've got the LUN information here, about 103.2 gigs is used. Total capacity is two terabytes, thin provisioned and it's being presented uh, pretty much. Uh, both of my ESXi hosts are connected to it. You'll notice that there's actually four entries, even though I only have two hosts. And again, that's because we're running iSCSI MPIO. So multiple connections are being made to the LUN and the iSCSI target. Now, connecting to the virtual machine, uh, again, as I mentioned, it's running Windows 11. I'm using Crystal Diskmark to do the benchmarks. Um, I've got four different windows open here because we're going to be running different tests. Now, uh, the top two, we are going to be doing um, five counts of a one gig test file on both of the top crystal disk marks. And on the bottom two, we're going to be doing a count of five on a 16 gig test file. Uh, just to show some of the different types of workloads. Also, you might be asking me why I have two of the same sizes. Um, I'm using different profiles. So on the top left, I'm using the default profile for the first five count of one gig. And then on the second five count of one gig, I'm actually using real world performance. And so you'll notice that some of the information uh, is a little bit different, like the uh, sequential one megabyte file eight queues, one thread, whereas on the other side, it's uh, one megabyte, one queue, one thread. Um, so I just wanna make sure that I'm providing as much information as possible with these tests. Um, so with that being said, as of right now, the unit has no NVMe cache. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, kick these off. I'm gonna, uh, the format that I'm gonna be using is I'm gonna start off one test. I'm gonna let this unit sit idle for about a minute, kick off the second test. Um, and then continue on uh, for each test. And the reason why I'm having a little bit of a delay between the tests is to make sure that any caching that's being handled by the Windows Virtual Machine um, or the RAM on the Synology unit, it can clear out so that all four of the tests are fair. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kick these off. I'm probably gonna speed up the video footage and then we'll uh, connect back afterwards.
And we're back. So let's uh, take a look and start interpreting some of this data. So as you can see, the window on the top left, this was our first test. And you'll also notice that it has the highest read mark. And I have a sneaking suspicion that uh, I noticed that the Synology DS1621 Plus actually caches um, inside of the unit's RAM. And so I think what happened is that when the test file was being created, it was actually being cached inside of the Synology's RAM. And that's one of the reasons why this read mark is so high. Um, with that being said, you do start to norm, uh, notice that as we continue with the tests, the numbers started to normalize. So I wouldn't find that the 2167 is too accurate. However, I do believe the writes are accurate. Um, same thing with all the other numbers. Um, checking out the uh, 792 here, the 788, the 798, and the 779, I think it's fair to say that um, with the current setup, we can expect around 780, 800 um, for uh, megabytes per second read speeds. You do notice that this one jumped up to 1426. That was a long sequential read. So technically that should be capable. Um, I, the RAM caching may or may not have had an effect on that specific number, um, but just keep that in mind. Now, as far as writes go, you'll notice that we got uh, 644, 402, 557, 442, 435, 489. I would probably say that an accurate write measurement would be somewhere in the ballpark of about 440 to 560, maybe 600 megabyte per second write speeds would be expected um, in this specific configuration without any NVMe or SSD caching. And uh, you'll also notice that we've got some IOP values here on some uh, random 4K measurements. Um, of about uh, 5300, 5400 read IOPS and 2700 write IOPS. Um, again, the number on the 16 gig file is, uh, they're, they're, they're close. Uh, I wouldn't say similar, but uh, we've got uh, 4400 IOPS on the reads and 2100 IOPS on the writes. So there you have it. Those are the benchmark speeds on the configuration without the cache. Now it's time to install the uh, NVMe modules. That actually went a lot smoother than I thought it was going to. Um, it was nice that we didn't have to use any tools to actually get those installed into the Synology unit. So anyways, I've turned the unit on and uh, we're logged into DSM. Let's jump into Storage Manager. Now this is pretty cool. Now, just an FYI, I've never configured cache on these units before. So this is, I, I'm, I'm as new to this as you might be. So. Um, now, before we only had this on the left, now we actually have the built-in M2 slot and it's showing that they're populated. So if we go down to HDDs, we can now see that we have the both of the new Synology SNV 3400-800Gs SSDs. Now you can expand these and uh, get information on health and a whole bunch of other stats. I've already checked, mine is showing is healthy. Um, I just don't wanna show that because there's serial numbers and I don't wanna have to blur it out. So. Anyways, what we're going to do is uh, we'll jump into, I think what we have to do is um, manage available drives. 
system has detected that we have two disks that are not in use and can be used for the following operation. So we can add, replace, assign as a hot spare, change rate type, create a storage pool. But we are going to choose create SSD cache. Now, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna mount this on volume one, which is our existing volume. And because we have two identical NVMe disks, we're gonna enable read and write cache. Um, and it tells us that we need to use two SSDs of the same type to create a fault tolerant cache. Uh, data is first written to the SSDs to improve random read and write performance and accelerate data access speeds before it's ultimately committed to disk. So we'll hit next. Just a warning that we're not supposed to remove it unless if we, so here's, this is a big one. I've read this before. If you configure write, read and write cache, you cannot just shut down your unit and yank it out. There may be data on those NVMe disks. So if you ever configure cache and you wanna turn it off and use those NVMe disks for something else, always make sure that you properly remove it from DSM before shutting down DSM and ultimately removing the hardware because if you don't, you could and probably will result in data loss. And this is just the warning um, stating that you have to safely remove it first. So we understand that, continue. Uh, we're going to configure these in RAID 1 because, as I mentioned before, they have to be uh, duplicated and mirrored. And we're going to select both of the cache disks. We're utilizing 745 gigs maxed. Now, if you read the Synology technical document, um, it tells you that for every gigabyte of cache, you need to have system RAM available. And so this is just telling us for 800 gigs, of uh, cache, we need to have, uh, it's gonna use 291 megabytes of system RAM so that it knows how to, uh, to store that information. And now here's one other option, uh, pin all BT uh, better FS metadata to the SSD cache. Um, it'll use up 2.5 gigs. I've never touched this, but uh, let's turn it on because it's supposed to increase performance. We've got quite a bit of cache, so we can spare 2.5 gigs for this. And we'll hit apply and we'll commit. Now it's erasing, it's configured as normal. If we go to the storage pool, we have rate type five with data protection and we have two cache disks now providing cache on the rate array. And now it's just pinning the metadata. It's marked as healthy. Cache hit rate is 100%. And I think we should be good to go. So I've got the virtual machine back on the Synology NAS and I've loaded up uh, four of the benchmarking tests. And I'm gonna test this identical to how we did it uh, before installing the NVMe. So I'll kick that off right now and we'll come back afterwards uh, after I speed it up to discuss the results. And we're back after quite a bit of time. I have to say that I'm surprised, but I'm not too surprised. Now let's go over these stats a little bit. So you'll notice that we had a little bit of a delay if you were watching the uh, sped up sequence with the testing on the final 16 gig test. I think we actually hit the sequential maximums on those uh, Seagate Ironwolf two terabyte drives. So keep that in mind with this testing. And this goes to a good point too, that if by chance you think that this is going to speed up some slower drives, it will speed up reads if they're repetitive and it will provide higher IOPS on random writes. Don't expect this to speed up a slow drive array. It's all about the workloads. So if we jump over and take a look at the uh, results uh, that we gathered here, um, first we'll uh, take a look at the five times one gig test file. So looking at the no cache, you know, it was around uh, 2.1 gigabytes per second, 2100 uh, megabytes per second. We actually noticed a, a little bit of a speed increase on the sequential reads. But on the flip side of that, you'll notice that we actually suffered a little bit of a write loss. Now, I don't necessarily 
believe that this is associated with adding the NVMe cache. Again, I think that we actually maxed out the cache, uh, the RAM, because again, the Synology units do provide some RAM cache. I think that was maxed out, which caused us to start getting some uh, slower writes. Uh, but at the same time too, you'll notice that we also did get a speed increase on the writes too. So jumping down to the bottom part of the, uh, the test here, looking at the real world performance, You'll notice that again, we saw a, an increase on the reads and a little bit of a decrease on the writes. Um, but the big thing that I really want to point out here is on the random 4K writes, you'll see that on the left hand, it was only doing 11.20 megabytes per second. We've now jumped up to 22.59 megabytes per second. And again, this all goes back to if you have random workloads doing random writes, you will benefit from cache, and that's why we saw that. On top of that as well, you'll see that the IOPS went on the writes from 2,700 to almost double at 5,500. That is crazy. That is definitely a performance boost and uh, just a couple hundred uh, added on for the read IOPS. But again, you know, when it comes to virtual environments, having higher IOPS is the best because you are getting a lot of random reads and random writes. Um, these benchmarks don't necessarily reflect a virtualized workload because we only have one VM doing either sequential reads and writes or very specific random reads and writes. So now if we flip over to the 16 gig file, uh, you'll notice that on the reads, we had a little bit of a decrease um, on the default profile going from 1426 to 1361. I believe that this is associated with the fact that it was a larger file. And again, the Synology's RAM does some caching. And I think that we filled it up by the time we got to the 16 gig files. Now, what you will notice is again, there is a performance increase on the writes, which is expected. Um, again, looking at the default profile, especially looking at the random 4K writes, we went up from 0 0.12 megabytes per second up to 53.64 megabytes per second. That is insane. That is a massive speed increase. Uh, taking a look at the bottom, the real world performance, uh, looking at no cache versus NVMe cache, um, we had a significant read drop and we also had a write drop. Um, again, I associate this with the Seagate two terabyte Ironwolf drives. Um, but you will notice that on the random 4Ks, again, you know, looking at the real world, world performance, no cache, 8.9 megabytes per second, and uh, real world with NVMe cache, it jumped up to 22.39 megabytes per second, 2100 IOPS with no cache, and then 5400 write IOPS with cache. So that is, a, again, a substantial increase on the... Uh, the IOPS on uh, random writes, again, going to the specific task and the purpose of having this. So with all that being said, you always want to make sure that your workload will benefit from this. Um, even me doing this test, I actually expected a, a larger difference. And I don't know why, because with this specific workload, we shouldn't have seen any difference at all. So um, that, that just goes to show that if you think this is going to speed up slow, crappy drives, I'm not saying that the Seagate Iron Wolves are slow, crappy drives. They are a little bit slower. Um, it won't make a difference unless if you have random write workloads or you're repetitively reading the same file over and over again. Those are the only types of applications. So again, make sure that you read all the Synology documentation, make sure that you plan your workloads and make sure that you plan your SSD cache, no matter how you're planning on implementing it. Anyways, I hope this video shed some life on to cache or not to cache. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. I hope you all have a fantastic day.